Let's see how well this goes trying to film a video with a rabid dog and a two-year-old. You got toothpaste all over your face. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlotte, if you didn't know. I make videos about mental health, life, chronic illness and having a child. And I have been filming videos um, since we went into isolation. It must be like five weeks ago now, four or five weeks ago. Um, I've been filming as much as I can and I mentioned on one of my videos that I had a few ideas for things that I wanted to talk about and those two things were dysmorphia <coughs> That's a frog uh, Those two things were dysmorphia and how I'm keeping myself as mentally healthy as possible in isolation um, But I've realized what I want to talk about before I film those is how my mental health has been impacted by being in isolation <coughs> and each impact of my mental illnesses because I have an eating disorder. <coughs> eating disorder. I have depression and anxiety and inside that bracket I also have OCD. I kind of made notes of the different things and I'm just gonna go through it and yeah, try and explain. I don't know why I think that anyone would be interested why me in particular is impacted, but I think it's, you know, it's all part of the wider it's all part of the wider bracket of talking about mental health more. I think it goes without saying that everyone is suffering at this time uh, mentally. You know, having a lot more time on your hands, lack of stuff to do. Oh, my hair is gonna drive me mental. Um, it makes everything worse. It amplifies everything. So it's not a surprise that people that have mental illness are gonna be suffering more in this time. Um, that's aside from everything to do with the actual virus and the worry and everything that 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 creates. The first thing I'm going to talk about is my OCD. Um, my OCD is, I've talked a little bit about it on this channel, but it's something probably, yeah? King. Cuggle. Do you want to cuggle mommy? King. Do you want to cuggle? King. But it's probably the thing that I've talked about the least because something that I feel for the most part I can keep under control. It was at its worst in my late teens, early twenties and throughout my childhood as well. Um, but for the most part now I keep it under control and the bits that I don't keep under control I find difficult to talk about because it's to do with intrusive thoughts which involve um, rape. It's not something that I massively feel comfortable talking about. My OCD isn't germ focused as such, it's more about what feels right for my brain. Um, so um, for example, I've just done that, well, I've just done that, I've just touched my head. And if my brain were to focus on that, I would feel like, but that side hasn't been touched, so I need to make it equal. And if that's how it feels, if that's what my brain's telling me I need to do, then I need to do it. And it's like an itch that is in me that I need to, I need to do it. Um, when I'm filling up water, if I'm filling up a glass of water, I will do it three times. So I'll fill it a little bit, empty it out, fill it a little bit, empty it out, fill it a little bit, all the way. Um, and I'm aware that's a horrific waste of water. I don't feel it the whole way, just a little bit. I'm aware that's a horrific waste of water, but it literally, it feels like I'm drinking water that's not actually water, or it feels like I'm filling the glass with water that's not actually water, even if it's not for me, I'll do it. And if I kind of like touch my hand on the radiator, for example, I've got a radiator just to touch my hand, I can feel there that my knuckles have a feeling on them, I need to equal it up like that. Uh, that's not quite equal, like that. Um, you're beautiful. The thing that has been difficult is the magical thinking. So if I don't do this, then this person will die or this person will become poorly. Um, that's something that I, that's something that I struggle with a lot and that has been worse and has been impacted by the virus, particularly as if you didn't know that there's been several members of my family that have been um, affected by this virus. <clears throat> my dad's in hospital at the moment with it. He's actually doing a bit better today and hopefully he's gonna come out. Um, he's moving on to a different ward and then if he can keep getting better, then he can come home, which is fantastic. Uh. The other side of it that I have is I have dermatillomania, which is uh, picking at your skin, uh, I, I guess. Um, picking at, it's to do with the dysmorphia, which I'm gonna make another video about. Um, but if I see imperfections in something, so if that's, if I've got hair or a spot or just something that doesn't make me feel good, I will pick at it with my fingers or a needle or in the past a knife or scissors. 
um, no, don't go in your nappy. Um, it, that has been really bad the last few months because I've got scars all over my legs. This video is considerably harder to film than I was expecting with my little visitor here. But I love your cuddles so much. <coughs> Cuggles, yeah. Right, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is my eating disorder. Just the sheer fact that there's more time means that people are going to be struggling more because there's less other stuff, there's less other distractions for your brain. And if you're feeling anxious and with everything going on, often when your brain, when your defences are low, if you're feeling anxious about something, as people are feeling anxious about the virus, that's when mental illness, no, that's when mental illness can really dig its heels in. The other, the other aspects of it in terms of an eating disorder, a my eating disorder is, you know, there's less access to safe foods. You're having to, we're having to shop differently now. My focus is making sure that Edie has all the things that she needs to eat, uh, which means that maybe there is an ability to get the things that I would choose. So I'm having to make, um, I was going to say sacrifices, it's not sacrifice, but I'm having to make that decision, um, which is not easy, but you know, as I said, my priority is making... Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? My priority is making Edie, is keeping Edie healthy and all of that. It's something that I am, I fight every single second of the day for her. But there's also the fact that for me, um, I used to go to the gym three, three times a week um, and not being able to do that has an impact on everything because for me, it's the only time that I get to do something. Edie goes to the crash at the gym. So it's some time that I get for myself. So that's been taken away, which is really difficult. It's time that I get to social, not socialize, but I'm around other grownups. Um, again, don't have that. And the focus on, um, I used to be very addicted to exercise and moving. Uh, obviously with my disabilities it's now different and I can't do what I used to do I can't go marching for hours and hours and hours on end um, I can't go running I can't do any of that I haven't been able to do any of that for a long time but you know um, I don't think there's anything else in terms of eating disorder that's kind of affected by this whole thing next up is depression and talking about depression and within that there's brackets of loneliness and self-worth I'll talk about that in a minute um, I think the whole world's depressed at the moment because it's a really depressing situation. It's a really shit situation. So, you know, it's not massively surprising that someone with depression is going to be feeling depressed. I was supposed to be starting back on my antidepressants several weeks ago, but I then got ill and I didn't want to kind of have... I didn't want to be feeling ill and having the side effects of starting the antidepressants again. So I put it off and then lockdown started and I don't really want to be battling with getting my medication and dealing with the side effects with all this going on. So I just thought it's kind of, I weighed up the pros and cons. And I thought, well, I'll wait until as long as I can keep my, thank you darling. As long as I can keep my mood stable, my mood stays stable. Um, I'll leave off the antidepressants until I can, uh, until lockdown is over. Because also with the antidepressants, you know, it needs to be monitored by my doctor about the dosage and all of that. I can't see my doctor at the moment, so um, obviously. I don't really like the phone appointments because you don't know when they're coming, so you have to wait, you know, it's like seven until seven in the evening. Could come any time. So if I miss my phone and it's, it just, it just pisses me off and it makes me anxious about missing my phone. And it's like, if I want to sleep, then I can't have a sleep. Um, so yeah, I'm going to wait until lockdown's over to start my antidepressants again. And as I said, inside the bracket of depression is the loneliness, which is, again, it's not something that just I'm affected by. Everyone's feeling it at the moment. Um, I feel lonely anyway, as, you know, aside from all of this, I, um, loneliness is something that I suffer, struggle with because I'm a single parent. I don't really have any friends. Um, you know, I see my family, but that's kind of... Yeah, it's a monkey. It's a chimpanzee. That's the only really interaction I have. And, um, you know, I'm 35, which is so old. And I don't have a friendship group. I don't have many people in my life. So loneliness is... Loneliness is something that I massively struggle with. Um... 
and yeah it's greatly amplified by lockdown i'm actually coping considerably better with lockdown than i was expecting because my idea of hell is having to wait in all day for a parcel and not being able to go out and i'm having to do that every day like it really pissed me off having to wait in for a parcel before lockdown and i'm coping really really well i'm proud of myself I'm gonna give myself that um it's everyone's feeling this isolate uh, isolation and loneliness People are being more mindful and reaching out more um, and making an effort more because everyone's in the same situation or for the most part, people are in the same situation. The last thing, which is in the bracket of depression again, is the self-worth. And that is something that is massively, massively affecting me at the moment. Oh. Again, I don't know whether it's to do with the virus or not. It's something that I was struggling with anyway. Um, and I've talked about it briefly on my channel. Um, I've had a rough few months in terms of this and feeling worthless um, and empty, I guess. And it is slightly amplified. You want to cuddle? It is slightly amplified with seeing, you know, other people that are in isolation that don't have... Oh, okay. It is amplified with, you know, seeing people in isolation that are not on their own so I'm, by on my own i mean with another grown-up um yeah yeah um and it's kind of you know people being isolated with their partners so people that are normally have a toddler in isolation they've got a partner with them um and that's kind of a reminder that i am on my own um and a reminder that i'm probably unlikely to ever find someone to spend my life with I make horrific, horrific relationship choices. I've had three partners and they've all been wankers, let's be honest. Um, I make really bad decisions when it comes to men, apparently. The one thing I try and keep in my mind is the fact that everyone's going through this. Everyone's feeling lonely. Um, everyone's feeling shit about, you know, it's a shit situation. Everyone's feeling shit. Um, and I think we're, you know, we're making, we're all making the best of it. We're all trying to make the best of this situation mm. and get by and stay safe. Mm. I'm going to make a video talking about how I'm keeping as mentally healthy as possible in, um, in this situation in terms of all the things that I've spoken about today. So I'm going to make that video um, another day. It's going to be an absolute beast trying to edit this because I've talked so much shit. I really, really, really struggle to focus sometimes. If my brain, like I can talk for England, but when my brain says, right, but when I'm having to like think, right, you need to talk about this, my brain just goes, oh, 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 and uh, I struggle with it. Um, you're doing a poo, aren't you? I'd be really interested in hearing how everyone else is coping. How, if you have mental illness, has it been impacted uh, by the virus have you been affected in a negative or positive way um and if you don't have mental illness have you can you identify with any of the things that uh, i've talked about today you know the loneliness any of that thank you for watching and i'll see you soon bye uh so uh...